talking about a very strange case, which happened in the heart of England upon Ilkley Moor. All of my stories on Most Mysterious Missing are true stories, and in this particular case, we have a man who's walked up on the moor and seen something really strange and experienced two hours missing time. We'll get more into the details now. This testimony comes from a very credible source. A retired policeman, in fact, back in 1987, on a very, very cold winter's morning, who'd walked up on the moor, planning to visit his father-in-law. It was a walk he had done many times before, but that morning he decided to take his camera, as he loved taking pictures of the beautiful landscape of the moors. The date was the 1st of December 1987 and up on the moor at that time would have been extremely cold, very windy conditions in the middle of winter with most likely snow. Now Ilkley Moor is at a very high elevation of over 1,300 feet above sea level. Up on that English moor, you will expect to find very rocky terrain, very, very short grass, not many trees, lots of streams and cold conditions. Philip Spencer is the name of that retired policeman who took a walk that morning across the moor to visit his father-in-law, and he had done this walk many many times before he wasn't surprised this morning to have seen a very thick mist hanging over the moor which made navigation more difficult but before i go on i must tell you that philip spencer is not really his name it is a pseudonym and the reason for that is he didn't want his real name to be known fearing the worst in terms of ridicule and stigma. He was very well prepared that morning when he left home. He was wearing thick winter clothes. He took a compass as he was concerned there may be fog and he also took his camera. Philip Spencer originally came from London, where he worked in the police force for many, many years, and he had recently moved to the remote West Yorkshire area in order to be closer to his wife's family, and he lived with his wife and child. Philip Spencer had no idea that that morning would turn into a very strange and unusual episode. In his words, as he would later announce, he was walking up a small hill and he noticed a person ahead. Well, at first he thought it was a person until he noticed it was actually an odd looking figure just up the trail ahead of him. It was dark green and around four feet tall. Its head was larger than it should have been and its arms were very long and thin. This is very typical of what one would expect an alien to look like. Oversized head, oversized eyes, and long thin arms which reach down past the knees. Many people faced with that situation would have turned and run the other way, but this is not what Philip Spencer did. He reached down for his camera. He reached for his camera 
And then the creature, or alien, made a gesture at Spencer, which Spencer thought might be a gesture telling him to stay away. But he had his camera in his hands, and the next thing, he took a picture. The creature ran away, and Philip Spencer followed it, but soon lost sight of it in the fog. But that wasn't the end of the story. After losing the creature in the fog, a few moments later, he saw a huge craft with a domed top rising above the fog and off into the sky. His description of this craft was that it was a whitish colour and consisted of two saucer-shaped parts that were attached at the middle, with one being on top of the other. There was also a loud humming noise. He didn't have time to take a photograph of the craft. Understandably feeling shaken, rather than continue with his planned route, he headed to another town that was about half an hour away. When he arrived, he discovered that it was about two hours later in the day than he expected it to be. His watch was at a different time to the other clocks in the town. It was this time difference that led him to believe that he had been a victim of alien abduction. Inexplicably, the compass which he kept in his pocket was facing in the opposite direction and this led people to believe that it may have been affected by some sort of electromagnetic force. Following this apparent abduction, Philip Spencer was insistent on keeping his anonymity and it was clear that he made no money from his story. It quickly made headline news all over the UK back in 1987. This photograph was thoroughly examined by experts. However, sceptics believe that it was a cardboard cutout or some person in a suit. To the contrary, a wildlife photographer who examined the photo said it could not be from any known animal and experts from the Kodak laboratory in Hemel Hempstead said that they could not detect any evidence of tampering. Therefore, it looked to be a genuine, untampered photograph. Now, men in black are a real phenomenon. They are claimed to visit victims of alien abductions and victims of close encounters with extraterrestrials. They usually arrive unexpectedly at a person's house, always dressed in black and often driving a black car. And unfortunately for Spencer, he was hassled by the Ministry of Defence a few days after the incident on the moor. According to ufologist Nick Redfern, they opened a file on Spencer and sent two men in black to his home to intimidate him into silence. Now, 
Now, there is no evidence to suggest that it was the Ministry of Defence that sent the men in black. Some ufologists believe that the men in black are extraterrestrials themselves sent to disinform and intimidate abductees. That is, to intimidate abductees into silence, to keep their secret. Following his apparent abduction, a few months later he was offered hypnotherapy to try to gather more detailed analysis of the experience. During one of these hypnotherapy sessions, he began to recall some more detail. And what he remembered was, when he first saw that creature ahead of him, he was instantly paralysed. Then he remembered being lifted up a few feet off the ground and then pulled into the craft. When he entered the craft, a voice told him in his mind, to be calm. A group of green aliens, he remembered, performed medical experiments on him, inexplicably inserting items into his nose and mouth. And following that, he was given a tour of the UFO and then shown a film. There are many thousands of people all over the world who have claimed to have communication with extraterrestrials, well, on this film that the aliens showed him, the film showed an apocalypse, including nuclear explosions, famine and floods. He was then shown a second film, but he has never revealed the contents of this second film, saying that the aliens who abducted him do not want humanity to know. Many people have claimed to have very similar images and communications from extraterrestrials, which include apocalyptic imagery. Could this mean that the aliens are trying to give us a warning as to the way we're treating our planet and that we need to treat it with more care? During this hypnosis session, he claimed to have then been returned to the moor. And then he took this famous photograph. He said that the alien was actually waving goodbye to him, not telling him to stay away as he originally thought. Now, Ilkley Moor is very barren and high in elevation. So what would the UFO have been doing there? Well, very nearby to where he claims to have been abducted, you will find the Twelve Apostles, which is a Bronze Age stone circle. Could the extraterrestrials have been visiting the area for this reason? Could the Twelve Apostles stone circle be some sort of landmark for UFOs. Well, Ilkley Moor has seen hundreds of UFO sightings over the years, and this certainly wasn't the first sighting of a UFO. It is well known as a UFO hotspot. So did the retired police officer really get abducted by aliens that morning? Well, he is thought to be a very reliable source. Investigators have no reason to believe he was lying. And his compass pointing in the wrong direction is some form of evidence. So is this story true? Was he really abducted by aliens? Well, I believe it's true. I've seen UFOs over the years and there have been very many sightings of UFOs in that area over the years also. 
He is a reliable source, being a retired police officer, and investigators also had no reason to believe he was lying. In terms of evidence, well, he had that famous photograph which was tested and believed to be genuine and he also had the compass which was pointing in the opposite direction. But what do you think? Please be sure to leave your comments below. Thanks for watching. May we never forget the strange and mysterious abduction of the retired police officer.